Melania Trump, watch what happens next. On Friday night, all eyes were on First Lady Melania Trump as she sat next to Russian President Vladimir Putin at the G20 banquet. She appeared to be at ease, even though she was conversing with one of the world's most intimidating leaders. Linguistically, Melania is the most gifted First Lady the United States has ever seen. She speaks five languages fluently, including German. It's clear that she was able to communicate with Putin without the usual language barrier. As someone who grew up in Slovenia when it was part of Yugoslavia, Melania was exposed to many different languages. She and Putin were seen chatting effortlessly at the dinner, which followed German Chancellor Angela Merkel's gift to her G20 guests, Ludwig van Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. The gesture was meant to spread her vision with a hymn to humanity, peace, and international understanding. Melania will probably get criticism from liberals for getting too close to Putin, but we're thrilled to have a first lady who can stand her ground in any situation. Do you agree? Finally Obama could go to prison for what he's been trying to do behind Trump's back. Barack Obama seems to be struggling with the idea that he is no longer president of the United States. Instead of shying away from the public eye, he has spent the past few months traveling the world and publicly criticizing President Donald Trump. On Friday, he took things way too far when he met with a foreign leader and completely undermined the commander-in-chief. Obama reportedly met with South Korean President Moon Jae-in to discuss Moon's resolve to pursue sanctions and dialogue to tackle North Korea's nuclear program. The foreign leader also shared the results from his recent summit with President Trump, allegedly asking for Obama's advice on ways to advance the relationship. Obama's actions are definitely distasteful, but they could be illegal as well. His conversation appears to be a direct violation of the Logan Act defined by Cornell Law School as, any citizen of the United States, wherever he may be, who, without authority of the United States, directly or indirectly commences or carries on any correspondence or intercourse with any foreign government or any officer or agent thereof, with intent to influence the measures or conduct of any foreign government or of any officer or agent thereof, in relation to any disputes or controversies with the United States or to defeat the measures of the United States, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than three years, or both. What do you think? Is it time for Obama to relinquish his power once and for all and give Trump a chance to lead? Kate Upton destroys Trump haters with the one thing she does best. In the liberal entertainment industry. It's a risky career choice to show patriotism and love for the United States in any way. That's why we were thrilled when supermodel and actress Kate Upton decided to celebrate America's birthday in red, white, and blue. Kate Upton was the star of Daily Front Row magazine's July 4th issue. A stunning shoot with photographer Matt Easton shows the model decked out in the nation's colors for a patriotic collection. In one of the pictures, the 25-year-old stunner was wearing a red glamorous red dress with black high heels. In another, she was wearing a white shirt, red briefs, and satin blue. Warning teams are now suing Republicans for being Republican. You might be targeted. According to reports, the California Democratic Party is suing a group of college Republicans for collecting signatures to remove freshman state Senator Josh Newman from office. Three members of the Cal State Fullerton College Republicans have been named in the lawsuit for their actions against Newman, who was a key player in support of April's $52 billion gas tax increase. The lawsuit alleges that the college Republicans and other conservative activists misled voters in their signature gathering effort to recall Senator Newman. The suit specifically identifies Amanda McGuire, Brooke Paz, and Ryan Hoskins as defendants in the suit. All three volunteered their weekends to talk to constituents about the cost of Newman's vote to taxpayers. Opponents of the outrageous tax hike gathered nearly 90,000 signatures is a matter of weeks to get the initiative moving. The signature forms all made it clear that the purpose of the initiative was to recall Newman. What do you think about this? Is it simply ridiculous?
Breaking, arrogant live celeb just got arrested. This is karma. In the past year or so, Sia Laba Oof has taken it upon himself to speak out against President Donald Trump any chance he gets. Ever since his anti-Trump art exhibit He Will Not Divide Us was shut down for creating chaos and violence at the Museum of Moving Image in New York, the former Disney star has had numerous legal problems. It's not surprising that Laba Oof is making headlines for being drunk and disorderly. According to reports, Laba Oof was arrested in Georgia on Saturday on a series of charges after becoming aggressive towards an officer. The 31-year-old actor was arrested on suspicion of obstruction, disorderly conduct, and public drunkenness. Fortunately, an officer was nearby when Laba Oof lost it on a stranger who refused to share a cigarette with him. He, Laba Oof, became disorderly using profanities and vulgar language in front of the women and children present, a statement from Savannah Chatham Metropolitan Police read. He was told to leave the area and refused, becoming aggressive toward the officer. When the officer attempted to place Laba Oof under arrest, Laba Oof ran to a nearby hotel. Laba Oof was arrested in the hotel lobby, where his disorderly behavior continued. Laba Oof's bail was set at $7,000 and each of the charges he is facing are misdemeanors. Whoopi Goldberg's runs dirty lib mouth at Trump, and immediately regrets it. A clip showing The View host Whoopi Goldberg claiming she was more qualified to be president than Donald Trump has just resurfaced. The footage shows Goldberg claiming she would make a better POTUS because she is more informed than Trump. The comment was originally made back in December. Here's the difference, Whoopi said, comparing herself to Trump. When I speak, at least you know that I've actually looked stuff up, so people think that I might be more aware. People know that I've had a wide variety of lives, so they think I might know some stuff. But when you have someone who doesn't seem to do the homework, who doesn't seem to have any idea how things actually run, when you bring up Hillary, I can only think to myself she may not have been the best candidate for people, but I know she knew what she was doing, she added. Social media users were quick to let Whoopi know just how mistaken she was. Fortunately, we won't see Goldberg in the office anytime soon. Barbara Streisand blasts Trump and gets the worst wake-up call of her life. On Friday, Hollywood liberal Barbara Streisand penned an op-ed for The Huffington Post, ranting against President Donald Trump and calling him an angry, hollow, vindictive man. The article, titled The Fake President, claimed that there is a narcissistic fraud in the White House. In the following paragraphs, the Academy Award winner questions Trump's mental health and his willingness to criticize the very fake news media. The large ego of a small man drives the vindictiveness of his policies, Streisand wrote. Later, she argued that Trump will not grow in the office. He watches cable TV and then tweets in a rage, the singer said. He lacks the temperament to fulfill his role. For all his ranting about fake news and fake media. The truth is, he is the fake president. Though wholly inappropriate, Streisand's comments are not entirely unexpected. Like the fellow Hollywood liberals, she is yet to go anywhere and the rest of are forced to listen to her whine. What do you think of Streisand's art? What Trump does for this Marine puts Obama to shame. Toward the end of his eight years as commander-in-chief, Barack Obama's approval ratings with our U.S. military had plummeted. More than half of troops surveyed had an unfavorable opinion of Obama, frowning on his decision to decrease military personnel and cut in defense budgets. President Trump has taken a completely different approach to our nation's safety. I'm going to make our military so big, so powerful, so strong, that nobody, absolutely nobody, is going to mess with us, Trump said. It's clear that he has immense respect for the military and realizes they need his full support. When Trump returned to Washington, D.C. from the G20 summit this weekend, the hat of one of the U.S. Marines guarding his helicopter blew off his head. Trump stopped to pick up the hat, placed it back on the Marine's head, and patted him on the arm. When the wind blew the hat off the second time, 
Trump chased it down once again. It's clear we have a true leader in the White House. Do you agree?